Are you searching for purpose of life? Discover your true identity. Stay tuned to Shalom World. Oh, hi, I'm Father Damien. We are at the Immaculata Mission School and I was speaking today about uh, Our Lady of Yasnagura. I was speaking of her gift to the world, of her wood wounded, wounded face, how she's helping us to tend our wounds. I hope it will help us. Mother Mary Therese asked me to um, speak to you about Our Lady of Yasnagura, whose name is also Our Lady of Częstochowa or Black Madonna. She has many names. And this is, this is her image. Sister Faustina in her diary wrote that Jesus said that from Poland will come a spark which will prepare the world for Jesus is coming. Many truly think that was actually John Paul II, Saint John Paul II, and I wholeheartedly um, agree with that. But in my prayer, I think there is something else which came from Poland, and it's going all over the world actually. And there are two images of two wounded persons. That's our Lord the image from Krakow, from the Divine Mercy Shrine, visibly having his um, divinized wounds, and Our Lady of Częstochowa, who has truly wounded face. And I wanted to focus on that because during these 10 days, we have been listening a lot about our woundedness on, in different areas. Um, each one of us uh, could identify it with some of them. We truly, uh, we went deeper, deeper into our hearts to find a place of meeting with the Lord, who said that in my wounds, there is your health. I wanted to start from the prophet Isaiah, which I really like. I call him, and many theologians call him, the evangelist of the Old Testament, because everything what will happen in New Testament with Jesus is prophesied in that book. And in one of the first verses, there is this sort of enigmatic text, uh, chapter 1, verse 4. O sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, offspring of evildoers, sons who deal corruptly, they have forsaken the Lord, they have despised the Holy One of Israel, they are utterly estranged. Why will you still be struck down that you continue to rebel? The whole head is sick and the whole heart faint. From the sole of the foot even to the head, there is no soundness in it, but bruises and sores and bleeding wounds. They are not pressed out or bound up or softened with oil. And going few verses later, 
the Lord says, Come now, let us reason together. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall become like wool. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. And I think that spark is actually the choice to see the woundedness from the, from the Lord's point of view. Since the fall, we have heard that talk about the fall and about the woundedness as well. So we are sort of equipped for that talk. The world beca became darker and darker and people truly wound one another, even unknowingly, even without intention. There is something in our nature which we have inherited after the original sin, which does not click. But the Lord came. The Lord came to bring peace. And after what he had done, what he allowed to be done to himself during his passion, very often we meditate upon the sorrowful mysteries of the Lord. There is that glorious morning when sun rises and with that sun also the Son of God. He rises from death and he is going to his Father. There's always that beautiful moment of Mary Magdalene who is waiting for the Lord and she has a privilege to meet him. And I always think that her love stopped the resurrection because the Lord couldn't just pass by Mary and go to heaven. He hadn't yet gone there. He needed to stop because she was loving so much that he just couldn't. The, the love of God is caring. It can see every, everything, every single bit of heart, and she is devastated. So, so he stopped. And there is that conversation, but the Lord says, do not touch me. I have not yet ascended to the Father. Do not touch me. So she was able to see him. But on that very day in the evening, there is an enormous change. The Lord who went to the Father is coming back now to his disciples and he's showing that he has a body because he wants to eat. He says, touch me. Ghost doesn't have a flesh. Touch me. Even more, a week later, he is asking Thomas to put his finger, his hand into the side and his fingers into his hands. His wounds are there, but not painful anymore. There was a change. The Lord is showing us an enormous mystery that the wounds were not taken. The wounds are there. This is an image of the risen Lord. And He is showing His hands, His feet are wounded. They are glorious wounds. The wounds which are changed by the mystery of God's love. And we are invited to that. That's why today I was invited to speak on that image of the wounded queen. The legend says the original icon of Our Lady of Częstochowa has been painted on the wooden panels from the table uh, of the Holy Family in Nazareth. Some would like to prove it because when the house of the Holy Family was taken to Loreto, it didn't come with the table. The table is not there. So, St. Luke, 
supposedly painted the icon of Our Lady of Częstochowa. Beautiful legend. We like to cling to that because we know how Luke is portray portraying Our Lady in his gospel. Almost like with the brush of the, of the paint, he's coming and, and, and portraying that little girl on a journey of unimaginable love, but also great suffering. And we can call her the Lucan Our Lady. Apparently, the icon was taken afterwards by St. Helena to Constantinople, and from there was taken to, um, given to, um, to the prince of so-called at that time Red Ruthenia, which now is uh, Eastern Ukraine. There was a castle in Bells. Apparently Poland was in fighting with few of those countries and Prince Ladislaus of Opole, he has attacked this castle and he has taken the image with him, which they are very not happy with us all the time. I have been to a few places in Ukraine and I can see the icon of Our Lady of Jasna Gura in some of the churches, some of the um, Orthodox churches as well. So, I don't know how to call it, the laws of history, not sure. She wanted to go somewhere, obviously. And Ladislav of Opole, making the long story short, he has founded a monastery in Częstochowa. It is uh, southern Poland, southern central Poland. And he invited monks from Hungary to, um, to take care of that icon. Our order was founded, some historians say 1215, others say 1225, depends how we look and what beginnings do we look. We were a remitical order created from the hermits of Hungary and a very much a charismatic order. I want to say that very clearly because we have begun from the vision of Blessed Eusebius, whose this year is 750th anniversary of his death. He was a canon of the cathedral in Estergom in Hungary, but he had all enormous desire to live for the Lord in a radical way, so he wanted to become one of those hermits. But when he uh, went to his hermitage, the Lord showed him a vision of tiny little flames, and those flames came together, giving a lot of light, and the Lord said to him, I want you to gather all those hermits because I will have a greater use for the church if you will live together and if you pray together. So enormous task, a miraculous task, because if I would be a hermit of that time and someone would offer to me a community, I'm not sure whether I would be very happy to go because all the hermits, they have their own way of life. So it was a miraculous thing that they actually agreed and the community was, was established. Our order was uh, approved by the Holy See in 1308. But St. Uh, Ladislav of Opole, uh, the prince, he brought us to uh, our order to Poland in 1382. It was a small monastery on a mountain, little mountain, called the Bright Mountain, Jasna Góra in Polish, the Bright, the Bright Mountain. Hermits living in a community and having a miraculous icon, Mary started to do a lot of miracles around and people started to come to our hermitage. The Pauline fathers were very unhappy. Very unhappy. What, are, what do you want here? Go away. We want to pray. <laughs> Our lady was insisting very much. There's a lot of proofs on the walls of the actual chapel of Our Lady how many miracles happened, physical miracles. 
we probably are not the same as Lourdes, but there is a lot. So what was happening that uh, people were very angry. They started to be angry and they started to notify bishops that they, there are those unwelcoming monks who have miraculous icon and they don't want to share. <laughs> so what happened, um, I think we have been somehow forced in the language invited to open up the church, our church, so people can come and pray. Mary truly, when she came to our order, she changed the mystery and the actual charism of our order. From the very contemplative community, we became very apostolic community. Though not losing the eremitical roots, we are very much attached to the theology of the fathers of the desert finding out what is the meaning of that, that hermit lives in a community and serves other people. I long, long time I have struggled with, with that vocation. How am I connecting all those dots? And the Lord gave me an image of a, of a big truck which is coming to the chapel and going out. So, and he gave me the understanding that I am his instrument. When I go to the chapel, I need to fill up all, you know, the back of the truck with all the graces and everything what people need. And then I'm going outside to serve and just to unload it so everyone can take what prayer has brought. Sometimes I truly argue with the Lord and ask him, you know, what about me? What about me? I'm just, you know, <laughs> passing. But the Lord has tre hidden treasures, obviously. So... Our, our Lady becomes more and more famous, uh, not only in Poland, uh, in, in um, neighboring countries as well. Going with the history uh, of, of our monastery, um, those of you who have been to the World Youth Day in Krakow in 2016, you certainly needed to go to the, to the shrine of Our Lady at Jasna Góra. You have seen that enormous fortress and a huge chapel which is built in stages. That's how it was done. At first it was a tiny wooden church, but it was growing. People were coming to, to that place to praise, and Mary was very, very generous. Everyone called, calls her a gentle lady, because when you look into her eyes, you just know that you are the one and she is looking at you, even though there is 250,000 people there. The painting has something in it that it just makes you a chosen, and she is actually looking at you. The gospel of that shrine is, is about the wedding in Cana. We, the Pauline fathers, we always have thought about ourselves as the servants of that wedding, again not asking, just serving, taking water to the stone jars, taking water to the uh, master of the ceremony. We are just there for this, taking water, which is so needed. So um, people were starting bringing votive gifts, votive gifts. We, the Pauline fathers, we have never taken her gifts. It was hers, not ours. So whenever, and people were bringing different things. They were bringing wedding rings. They were bringing uh, gold, uh, gemstones, all sorts of things. And at first, fathers didn't know what to do. And we know that the actual X-ray photos have shown that in the beginning, Fathers were placing those gems, they were nailing them to the face of Our Lady. That was hers. Later on, a beautiful tradition happened because there was too many votive gifts. This is not the original um, sort of setting. Fathers have figured out that she needs robes 
She has a quite a wardrobe. A great woman. <laughs> a different ones, depending on what kind of gems. She has a diamond robe where people were bringing a lot of diamonds and they are being put into, uh, you know, um, encrusted into, into, the, into the robe. Corals, pearls, different, uh, di diff even there is a, one, one of the robes is called the, the robe of faithfulness because it's made up of wedding rings being sewn one next to the other. Uh, so she looks like she has an actual um, armor, armor of faithfulness. What happened that um, the fame went that she is rich. So in 1430, and this is absolutely important detail, during Easter ceremony, there was a robbery in the monastery. I say this is important because it's Easter. Jesus is rising, he has wounds. The robbers stole the icon. They couldn't quickly um, take the gems from, 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 the, from the picture, so they took the picture with them and they took all the, all the votive, votive gifts. They put her on a, on a um, carriage and they were going with, with horses. Uh, apparently, the story says that the carriage stopped, the horses stopped, and they didn't want to go. And they were beating the horses very badly, but they didn't want to move. And they sort of figure out that was Our Lady. So they thrown the icon on the ground, and using sword, they actually hit Our Lady a um, few times on this this image, we can see only two, but there is more. The, the, the icon is made up of three wooden panels, so they were, they were broken up. Um, it took quite a while to repair Our Lady, more than two years. They didn't know what kind of technique she was painted. Apparently, the paint is mixed with, uh, with eggs, with um, wax. So the painters of the Polish king, they wanted to, to, to repair, but every time they put a new paint, always was just, you know, going down because it couldn't, um, couldn't be um, stuck to the, to the wax. So finally they, they figure out this and they repainted Our Lady. We don't know how she looked, uh, before 1430, because there was, there was a lot of changes. She is also called the mother of unity between East and West, because it's a Byz Byzantine I icon, but she is repainted in a westerly way. She's called Hodigitria. Uh, I see you can, you know, I love Greek words. <laughs> Hodigitria means the one who shows the way. If you see icons when Our Lady holds the baby Jesus on her arm and holding another arm towards baby Jesus, she's the one who shows the way, always shows the way. There was a few other miraculous events. In 1655, there was a war between Poland and uh, Sweden, Poland was completely um, overcame by a Swedish army. Only the, the monastery of Jasna Góra was a free place in Poland. There was a quite a large Swedish army and only 100 soldiers inside the monastery, which were only farmers from surroundings, surrounding fields and they were protecting the monastery, so the Swedish army would not come. During the siege, we know that Our Lady protected that place. There's a lot of images, uh, paintings, showing Our Lady above the actual um, monastery and the bullets from cannons going towards the monastery and she's holding them. 
So she was protecting that place. The army, the great Swedish army, was, was not unable to, to uh, enter the monastery. It was miraculously protected. Also by the power of God, obviously, at the prior of that time, Father Augustin Kordetsky, he was going with the monstrance around the monastery with the Blessed Sacrament. So you can imagine there was fighting, there was shooting, and Father is going with the Blessed Sacrament, and the monks are behind him singing the Litany of Loreto, asking the Lord to protect. Another story about miracle was in 1920, when Bolshevik army from the Soviet Union attacked Poland and wanted to take uh, the, their revolution towards Europe. And a uh, Polish army was, was standing in their way. Small Polish army and a huge Soviet army. Apparently, during the battle at Vistula, 15th of August, everything is connected in Poland with the dates of Our Lady's Feast Day. 15th of August, there was a huge battle, which um, some say that Our Lady actually shown uh, herself protecting Polish army, and the Polish army defeated Russians. They needed, to, they, needed, they needed to retreat. They were unable to go to other countries. Otherwise, we, would, we could have a Cold War much earlier when because the, some, of, some people were waiting in France and Germany for the Russians to come. So there could be a, quite a different change of history. And the last, time, the last thing what I would like to tell you about the miracles, we have uh, witnesses from uh, actual Luftwaffe during the Second World War. They had an order from Hitler to bombard the monastery because they knew that the spirit of Poles is there. So the, the actual battalion who was flying above Częstochowa apparently couldn't find place, though having maps and being very good in bombing Polish cities, perfect, they couldn't find Jasnogura. They were unable to, to bomb that place. Our Lady has put her mantle around. So this is the story, little, little story about that place. Um, a little bit about my story of life, um, why it happened. So it is very much connected to, to the actual history of Poland because um, in 1966, Poland celebrated a millennium of Christianity. So a thousand years of being a Christian nation. And Cardinal Wyszyński, who will be beatified in May, he, or, he was at that time in jail, be, being um, jailed by communists. He said, we need to prepare ourselves for, for that celebration. And so he ordered that, uh, he ordered other bishops, he was the actual president of the conference and the primate of Poland at that time. He asked bishops to bring pilgrims to Jasna Gura to prepare for nine years, celebrating a great novena before that great feast day of millennium of Christianity, which they were hoping to, to invite uh, Pope Paul VI for that. Obviously, communists didn't, didn't allow for that. They didn't allow pilgrims to go to Jasna Gura. So primate said, if they cannot come to her, she will go to them. So he ordered to paint a beautiful copy, a replica of the icon, and he asked to take that replica to, to Vatican. Saint Pope Paul VI <laughs> could bless it. And what happened, she started to go in a pilgrimage from parish to parish. It was set up in that way that every parish was having, before she come, a, a missions. So there was a great renewal going on in Poland. And she was able to stay in parish only for 24 hours. So she was coming. There were beautiful celebrations. There were masses, confessions. And then the next day, she was being brought to another parish. So um, my vocation started exactly with that, that event. I didn't have a faith at that time. I think I left the church when I was 13. And um, it was a time of t transition in Poland. Communism collapsed. 
we got freedom, I think money started to be more important. My parents had a business, my mom and my, my stepdad, they had a business, quite few of them, and I was helping them in different, in different areas um, because money was important and God. Our, our family was not very Catholic. There was, you know, we were very traditional, so we were keeping traditions, but there was no faith in that. It was not sustaining us. So, and I was becoming more and more distant from the church, but also from my, from my family. Um, because of different situations in my life, um, I was a very much a guy of what I already said to a few of you, DIY. Do it yourself. You cannot rely on anyone. No one will help you. So I was very good in living my life on my own though it was very straining on my, on my energy. My mom received the grace of conversion a year before me. She started to pray. She started to go to the church. I was pretty nasty to her at that time because I was really laughing at her. You know, the commandment says once a week, so you're going every day. What are you doing there? I had absolutely no idea what is awaiting me but my mother was praying for me. It happened that the actual day came for our parish to host the icon. God has a great sense of humor. The communists have figured out that the pilgrimage of the icon is doing great damage to their ideology. So they put her to jail. <laughs> they stopped the car. She had a beautiful car with a crown on the top. It's a, it's a, you know, queen's chamber. She was put to jail, literally to jail, behind bars. <laughs> because they were so afraid. What is going on? There were so many conversions. People from the, from the communist party started to bring babies to be baptized. They started to come to mass. They, they, it, was, it was massive national conversion. They were not stupid. They knew what was going on. However, our primate was not stupid as well. He said, she cannot go, the frames will go. <laughs> there was only frames and the book of the Bible. She started to go like that. People were even more fervent. There was more miracles. <laughs> there was even more miracles. It was happening like a tsunami in Poland. The communists figured out they gave back Our Lady. Let there be less. <laughs> so the time came for her to come to my parish. I didn't really know exactly about what's going on in my parish. I was not there for a long time. But my mom started to... Um, yeah, there, is, there is something in... Um, I think in women as well. They, 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 they know how to get to the man's heart. Some people call it nagging. <laughs> Others call it in a different ways. But she started to, to plead with me, will I go to Mass with her when Our Lady will come? I said, what? Our Lady will come? Hello? What is going on with you? What's wrong with you? Our Lady will come. No, I'm not going with you. She was, for three days, I'm telling you, for three days, she was asking me constantly to go with her. I said after three days, three days, so it's important actually. After three days, I said, I'll go, but not with you. It was embarrassing. I know now that it was wrong. It was wrong, because she loves me very much. And I have seen sometimes images of sons going either before or after mom, and mom is very sad. So, Yes, but I didn't know that then. I said, I will go, just leave me alone. I was very curious what will happen. And my curiosity is, you know, I have to pray about my curiosity. <laughs> but in that instance, it was very helpful because I wanted to see how it is happening. So the beautiful car came, like a mini, mini van, and she really had like a queen's chamber there. She was being 
um, or she was being taken like a ferretron. I don't know how to call it, but it's like a like a car carrying, you know, thing. She was being taken out from the car, and I'm standing right next to her. And as I said to you, her gentle face and her eyes. That was the first time when I when I met her gaze, and I fell in love. I don't know what happened that day. In one second of my life, millisecond, just one look into her eyes, and my life was changed. I was literally in love, like in those, sometimes in those Disney movies, you know, those birds. <laughs> I, couldn't, I couldn't stop looking at her. It was actually very funny, you know, we know that during Mass you have, you know, you stand up, you kneel down, you pray. I was standing in the middle of all those people, like here, I was standing in the middle. I don't know what they were thinking about me, and I was like that. <laughs> Imagine this, Bishop is celebrating Mass in front of me. I have a photo to prove it. <laughs> I have found out a photo in an album of, album of my mom which I had no idea. Last year, two years ago, I have, we were watching an album and I saw, I have that photo with me <laughs> in my phone. So if someone wanna look at that, I am very happy to show it. I had long hair that day. <laughs> <laughs> so what happened in, during that mass, I have no idea what happened, but I'm going home my mom was already in home. I couldn't sort of figure out what's going on. I am, I'm opening the, the door to our apartment and my mom looks at me and I say to her, Mom, I'm going to seminary. <laughs> <laughs> that was the decision in one, in, in, you know, the, it, I'm, I'm telling you, she came at six, I'm coming back to, uh, at nine, I'm going to seminary, Mom. And my mom looking at me, finally. <laughs> finally. I have found out on that day that I have been consecrated to Our Lady of Yasnagura during my, my baptism. And I have a photo to prove it as well. <laughs> I'm holding by my, by my father in front of the image of Our Lady of Yasnagura. And I was hers from the beginning, but I didn't know that I would be a Pauline father at that time. I didn't know anything about orders or whether this is a diocesan priest or, or, or religious priest, no idea. I knew that priests are made up in seminary. That was the thing, that was the word for me. What to do with this, no idea. My mom came to help with the absolutely um, unimaginable story in Poland, there is a very Catholic radio called Radio Maria. And it, it has been seen as a radio of old ladies with that uh, special, you know, uh, berets. And it was an absolute uh, embarrassment to everyone and that stage, I'm, I'm talking, you know, please forgive me about that, but I'm talking in our, you know, circles in, in, in high school, you know, thinking of that, that was a total embarrassment. My mom says, I want you to go with me to that, to, to Yasna Gura with those ladies. You'll be only one in that bus. And they, all, all of those la old ladies will be with you. I was 19. <laughs> it was a terrifying experience. And they were praying a lot of rosaries. I didn't know the rosary at that time. What happened on that day, I will never forget this. There were so many people at, in that meeting, those who listen to that radio, they have an annual celebration and it, and it brings to half a million of them. They all gather at that place, half a million people. The chapel of Our Lady was so packed that I had to wait two masses going every second a little bit further, going to Our Lady. I went through two masses, 
those who have been there, you know that there is that, though, this lattice there, which is sort of protecting the queen's chamber. I finally got to that place. And have you experienced the closing and opening? Can, did you hear the verbals, the, 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 the drums and shaking ground? That was a moment when I got there. I just knelt and the image started to, to be closed. In one second, I felt I don't have a heart. My heart is behind that plate. And I knew this is my home. From that moment, I did everything what I could to become a Pauline father. The story is even, even probably greater in that sense. But I always wanted to be there. That was my place, that was, that was my home, that was home of my mother, and I really, really wanted to serve her there. So you can imagine when I told you about when Australia came to my heart after these few years of formation, it was a total surprise for me. But it was so great in my heart that it actually allowed me to just leave everything and, and go but on the condition that she is going with me. She is going with me. It's very difficult sometimes to go to Yasnagura and sit down there and look into her eyes, knowing that in a few days I need to fly back to, to Australia. It's kind of, it's like a, um, the moment of heart is sort of mixed up. Because the moment I land here, yes, I know what I'm doing. But in that time of sort of transition of heart, it's very difficult because I know that my heart is there. On my ordination card, I have written the words of Moses when he was praying to the Lord. The Lord said to Moses, if I will go with you, will you be satisfied? And Moses responded, if you will not go with me, forbid me to go. So I was very much praying upon that and I know that God wanted me to go to Australia and he has anointed it. He has given me uh, great gifts. One of these is that I'm actually speaking in English and you can understand, <laughs> hopefully, <laughs> hopefully. So, the story is also more spiritual. Our Lady is truly working as a, because I said to you that the actual gospel of, of, the, um, of that place is the Cana in Galilee. It also means that Our Lady is finding out things which we need. She was the first one to find out they had, they had no wine. And people go there to find out what they are lacking. Praying in front of that icon is to find out our lackings, what we don't have. And for that reason, I think Our Lady allowed herself to be, uh, to be made similar to her son. It was not a coincidence that her face was wounded. Polish history was very wounded. Polish nation is very wounded. But the gift of that icon is the gift for the world because we are all wounded. And coming to Our Lady, looking at her face and looking at our wounds, we can find a place of healing. She is the one who knows exactly what we need because she is called the mediatrix of all graces. Father has entrusted to her the greatest grace he had, his son, Jesus Christ. And from now on, he wants that all the graces will come through her. And she is especially preparing them for us. Individually, it's not a mass production of graces. She is looking at the heart of each one of us and she is tending to that heart. She is caring that heart. She is truly taking our hearts into hers. Her heart is 
in thorns, is, with, is, is pierced with a sword. She knows what is the meaning of a wounded heart. So we come to her. Icon, especially in the Orthodox theology, in the Eastern theology, is understood as the window of heaven. So looking at the icon, and that sort of, we have that three icons. We have the Blessed Sacrament. We have icons of Our Lady, but not only Our Lady. There are beautiful other icons. Rublov's icon of the Holy Trinity. And also we have the Word of God. Those three icons, those three windows, are allowing us to look at our wounds in a different way. Because the health of ours is in His wounds. But Mary, like the greatest nurse, doctor, she's tending to those wounds. And she is doing something incredible. Some of your wounds will never be healed, but they will be transformed into glorious wounds of heaven. Hi, I'm here with Ignatius, who's from Melbourne. What was your expectation coming to mission school and what was your experience? Um, I was really expecting it to be a time of grace and a time of prayer, which it has turned out to be, which is fantastic. Um, and my experience has been what I expected, but in some ways, um, a period of deeper, like of growing in self-knowledge in a way that I didn't expect would happen. Um, parts of my own heart have been revealed to me that I didn't think would be. Um, I didn't realize existed. Um, and yeah, it's been a really healing experience. What do you think has helped that? Adoration. <laughs> Lots of adoration. That's most of it. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you. of talk in our church today about the new evangelization and we might ask well what's new about the new evangelization one thing that's new is that we're trying to renew the faith in people who should already be catholic should already be christian individuals families communities whole cultures that need to rediscover the gospel and so what's new is that they're getting a new shot in the arm of faith of evangelization another thing that's new about it is the way that we do that and the new media and groups like Shalom World TV are very important for bringing the gospel anew to our cultures, to our families, to each of us individually. And so I encourage all the viewers of Shalom World TV and I encourage uh, Shalom World TV themselves to keep up the good work, uh, to keep watching this channel and to keep up the good work of presenting the Catholic faith to our world today.